Hello again. Thank you for joining me in this next video. We are now looking at the SLDB board, which controls the pitch and the tempo range. First, we have VLED and GLED, which is the 12 volt and the 12 volt ground for the LEDs. Next, we have MTL and TRESL, which are the LEDs for the master tempo. Next, we have KEY1 underscore B, which is the button array for tempo range, master tempo, and tempo reset. So just like before, those three buttons will work on the one analog output. So we're going to remove the resistors, cut the tracks, and wire onto the back of those buttons. The last four controls are for the pitch slider. We're bypassing those completely and we're going to wire onto the back of it. So as we look on the back, we can see that we've got the same solder points for the wires. We then have the three points for the pitch. We're going to remove the capacitors. We're going to bypass all of this zero point circuitry because it interferes with how it works. Because the Teensy is only 3.3 volt, we need to isolate the pitch from all of the other voltages so that we don't conflict with anything. So we're going to solder onto the pads just like before. And I really want to point out that I made a really bad mistake on this. I put the 12 volt onto the 5 volt line. I didn't realize that the pad was jumper across and I actually damaged one of the components. Now, luckily, it was a component that we're not actually going to use, so it didn't make any difference. But what it did do was take out one of the fuses on the CDJ. So I had to repair the fuse before I could go any further. I wasn't sure if it had done any more damage, but thankfully it hadn't. So again, the point that I'm soldering now is wrong and it needs to be on that large pad just below it. So this is the correct place to wire the VLED, the 12 volt, for the LEDs. So this next point is the 12 volt ground. Then we have the yellow wire for the master tempo LED. Now we're going to remove the resistors for the buttons that we uh, that we need to isolate. Just use the solder braid like before to remove off any excess solder. Second resistor for the tempo range button. And now we're going to cut the tracks that join all of these buttons together so that each button doesn't interfere with the other buttons. We don't need to remove the resistor for the tempo reset button because it doesn't have one, but we cut the track. I am actually not using it in this example. It's up to you if you want to use it. Now we're going to solder the wires onto the positive legs of the switches, exactly the same as we did before. Okay, so now we're on to the pitch slider. So we are cutting the tracks on either side of the pitch to completely separate them from everything else and removing the capacitors because they're going down to ground and we need to separate the ground as well. And then cleaning them up. Okay, so first we have uh, the plus voltage so eventually that will be 3.3 volt from the teensy um, but my example I'm just using the 5 volt then we have the ground this will also be the analog ground on the teensy and now we have the link that goes to the analog input of the teensy to read the actual position of the pitch 
So there we go. There are our wires so that we can connect this into the Teensy. So we have ground, we have the button wires, we have the 12 volt ground and the 12 volt in the wrong place. We have the master tempo LED and then we have the connections for the pitch slider. So like I said, I made the mistake, I put the 12 volt on the wrong place, I actually connected it to the 5 volt and it made the smoke. So we can see this is one of the transistors that's part of the uh, zero point circuitry and it made the smoke. Uh, I really did think that I'd blown up the power supply on the CDJ, so I was quite lucky. Changed one of the fuses and everything's working again. Okay, so we now have our test set up. We have a 12 volt going to the VLED and we have 5 volt going onto the yellow peg of the breadboard. So to turn on the master tempo LED, we put 5 volt to the yellow wire and we can see that the LED comes on exactly the same as the last board. The two buttons are now isolated from everything and they are on the blue and the white wires. If we put the meter to continuity we get the beep to show that the button's pressed and then we use the we've got the second white wire for the second button and then we have the grey wire which is the swipe from the pitch control. So this would go to our analog input on the Teensy. So in the centre position we're getting roughly half of 5 volts as we move it to one side. It goes up and then when we go down it goes down to zero. So like I say, on the Teensy we only have 3.3 volt, so we use the 3.3 from the Teensy, we use the analog ground for the swipe, and then we use an analog input pin to read the actual slider. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through the jog. So <clears throat> on the other video we wired up the connectors that we took off the board. So we have our pressure switch, and then we have our jog wheel encoder. So the jog wheel we have ground plus voltage, data 1 and data 2. So the data 1 and data 2 need to go to digital pins on the Teensy. The jog presser switch is just another digital input and as we can see when we press it down it just shorts the circuit. So for the jog encoder, we need to go to pjrc.com and look for the encoder section. So thank you for watching and we've got one more board to do, which is the main board. That is basically the same as what we've already done. It's just buttons and LEDs. So that should be quite straightforward, but just time consuming. After that, we then have the joy of wiring all this into the Teensy and double checking all of our work that we've done over these past videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again.